In the late 1920s, President Herbert Hoover was traveling through Indiana with various civic leaders. His biggest thrill, he admitted later, was an opportunity to shake hands with one of the nation's biggest celebrities, the famed U.S. racing champion and Hoosier automotive pioneer, Cannonball Baker. I don't think of him as a publicity seeker, but by golly, he got it. Erwin G. Baker was born in a log house on a farm in southeastern Indiana in 1882 and moved with his parents to Indianapolis when he was 12. As a teenager, Baker had great interest in innovative mechanical devices, including new automotive technologies that would fuel a powerful American industry in the Midwest at the turn of the century. Indianapolis was an industrial town, and uh, it was amongst the first to embrace uh, the new uh, automotive age. From the time he was tall enough to reach the pedals of a bike, Baker was traveling the Midwest, putting on daredevil shows for vaudeville audiences, competing in speed races, and performing amazing motorcycle stunts. Over time, he was hired as a test driver for vehicle manufacturers like Louis Chevrolet and Henry Ford, as well as the Indian Motorcycle Company, all pioneers of engine-powered transportation. So at the very beginning, a test was, will it start? <laughs> and then will it stay running, and, and can we you know, drive it down to the end of the block, and then uh, let's do it again and see if we can do it faster. And that's how uh, the, the testing began. At the time, there were very few paved roads across the United States. Interstate highways did not exist. In order to create a safer testing area for motorized vehicles, Indianapolis businessman Carl Fisher and others financed the construction of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1909. Two and a half miles around, so the thinking was that you could really get a, up a head of steam. The idea was to take an automobile out there, or a motorcycle or whatever, and just run it till it blows up. It was an opportunity for the public to see testing in head-to-head -head combat. The first motorized races ever held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway were actually motorcycle races. And in 1909, one of the Speedway's most successful pilots was Erwin G. Baker, whose speed, power, and endurance earned him the nickname Cannonball, after the powerful Midwestern locomotive, the Wabash Cannonball. Uh, Cannonball Baker was, was a very strong man, uh, but he also was big framed and had huge hands. He had the physical capabilities, but also the, the, the mental. He wouldn't give up. It was very, very dangerous. Not only was it rough, I mean, you had the engine heat, your legs would get splattered with the oil, and then just the, the, um, the danger level. You would either go up and uh, hit the wall, uh, bad injuries or, or fatalities were not uncommon at all. Baker earned a reputation as a fearless competitor, steering either motorcycles or automobiles the only person to compete at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on both two wheels and four. His real fame, however, came when he began to stage cross-country races against the clock, attempting to set endurance records from one end of the country to the other. These races, known as Cannonball Runs, were widely popular and turned Baker into a national celebrity. For decades, there were people that would, would live their entire life in the same place, maybe not even go to the next town. For the fact that somebody in, you know, 1906 or 1907 would, would go from one coast to the other, I mean, he may as well be going to the moon. He'd have to ride through fields and uh, maybe, you know, come to where there was a river. And so it, it would take days. You're on your own. And uh, if, it, if you have a problem out in the middle of nowhere, you fix it yourself and then, uh, and then press on. I mean, did he have a budget of thousands of dollars and stay in hotels? No. He probably slept in sheds and fields and farmhouses and so on and so forth. 
piling up more than five and a half million miles in his career and staging more than 140 cross-country endurance races, Baker set many speed records and captured the attention of a nation in the midst of a hedonistic celebration during the Roaring Twenties. At a time when most passenger cars were only traveling about 10 miles per hour, Cannonball Baker was racing across the country at more than seven times that speed through rough, unpaved terrain, driving hard, sleeping little, and pushing the abilities of man and machine to heights never before imagined. In the teens and 20s, he was in the papers a lot. He's up there with Jack Dempsey and, and Babe Ruth and all of the other uh, larger-than-life uh, heroes of the day. 